meeting to Mr. to Mr. Fazal Ahmed to show his presentation. Please, sir, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So today's topic is kidney stone and uh, renal trauma. Kidney stone is uh, one of the major problem which we usually find during scanning and it is uh, one of the easiest diagnosis also. When we diagnose by means of uh, ultrasound machine, then it is very easy to diagnose uh, kidney stone or renal stone. But on another hand side, one of the most uh, problematic condition is that kidney is one of the important organ of human body and when it get affected then there is no further treatment of the kidney no treatment of kidney only dialysis or renal transplantation so this topic is considered one of the important topic on other hand side there are several type of disease by which patient may suffer like adenoma hydronephrosis hydronephrosis uh, and uh, pyelonephritis and several type of disease of the kidney so we should have to learn each and every part related to kidney so i have decided to start this presentation related to kidney related to kidney stone related to trauma so now i am going to start my first page first slide let me change my slide As we all know that kidney stone is also said as renal calculi, nephrolithiasis or urolithiasis. These terms are interchangeable. You can use any of the term as you like. During ultrasonography, renal calculi can be easily seen in the collecting system which means calicial system and we can able to scan by means of 3.5 megahertz transducer and the size of stone which we can able to detect that is 3 to 4 mm in diameter then what about the stone which which is more smaller that is about 2 to 3 mm in diameter then in such condition we should have to use a probe of higher frequency greater frequency that is about 5 megahertz transducer if we will use 5 megahertz transducer we can able to detect a smaller calculi also now i am going to change this slide Uh, I I will request everyone to please uh, switch off your uh, camera. I will only open my camera. May I switch on my camera? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Actually, okay. I want to see you. Uh, actually, okay. Uh, sorry for. A kidney stone usually do not cause symptom because we know that calicial region is larger and when a person suffer from renal stone, when a patient suffer from renal stone and show symptoms, then we come to know that there is certain problem and we do scanning we do a scan and during a scan we find yes patient is suffering from uh, kidney stone sometime it happens that the patient having a stone but we unable to detect 
so it is essential to do two type of scanning number one we have to do transverse and another one we have to do longitudinal scan one of the drawback of ultrasonography is that if a patient renal system is not functioning properly we cannot be able to evaluate by means of ultrasonography only by means of intravenous pilography we can able to identify yes patient kidney is not working patient kidney is not properly working then how we will detect how we will detect that there is a stone is stuck in the ureter and patient kidney is patient kidney is not working how we will understand one of the best trick that one kidney if get failed then another kidney become enlarged the that condition is said as compensatory enlargement of the kidney so during ultrasonography when you find that one kidney is as it is or is smaller in size a trophy of the kidney and another kidney get enlarged then it means you may doubt you may suspect yes that person is suffering from renal disease and one kidney is probably not working so it is very necessary to check serum creatinine and uh, uric acid test so when kidney stone usually uh, will not cause symptom until it moves around the kidney or pass into one of the ureter when it get stuck in the ureter then it become problematic then then several type of symptoms you will find now i am going to change my slide this is one of the image in which stone is stuck in the ureter and uh, renal pelvis uvj and due to which hydronephrosis may develop patient develop hydronephrosis and hydronephrosis can be easily uh, can be easily detected its grade can be easily detected by means of ultrasound there are another there are several other conditions in which symptoms will be same like uh, ureterocele like stringer of the ureter or development of neoplasm or any mass which is uh, compressing the ureter in all condition you will find and even uh, hypertrophy of the prostate also in all condition you will find a similar type of uh, uh, pathophysiology that is hydronephrosis of the kidney but the most common symptoms which develop due to uh, renal stone is uh, actually uti urinary tract infection and one more one one of the uh, uh, stone is also formed due to infection of the kidney also i will let you know in my next slide now i am changing the slide if kidney stone become lodged in the ureter it may block flow of urine and cause kidney to swell and the ureter spasm which may which can be very painful so during sonographic scanning you will find that yes the size of the kidney is quite enlarged patient is suffering from hydronephrosis then you have to check you have to find out where is the stone sometimes stone is there but we cannot able to detect we cannot able to find out certain small size stone when a stone is below 5 mm it can enter into the urinary bladder very easily and it can pass out and sometime it it may block the urethra also so 
we have to check everything and if during scanning we we suspect yes patient uh, may have any chance of a stone then a preliminary x-ray of plain abdomen is needed and on another hand side intravenous pyelography is one of the important test which do not only show the obstruction but also show function of the kidney at that point your patient may experience uh, uh, these symptoms which are uh, given over here uh, sharp pain in the side and back below the ribs pain that radiates to the lower abdomen and groin pain that comes in wave and fluctuate in intensity pain or burning sensation while urinating so a sonographer or a sonologist should have a very good knowledge of patient symptom patient history and symptom is very necessary to uh, find the disease because we go, we die, we get the image that is only two dimensional image there are uh, there are several images in which three people give three type of opinion four people will give four type of opinion so how opinion will become single when we will correlate the symptom patient history and then we will see the image then we will uh, able to assess yes the disease is uh, following is the disease patient is suffering from that disease now i am changing the my slide so in every test it is very necessary to learn about the pathophysiology and uh, there are several book of pathophysiology every radiologist and sonologist must have good knowledge of pathophysiology as well as medicine it will help you to diagnose to learn imaging next other sign and symptoms may include pink red brown urine cloudy or foul smell urine a persistent need to urinate urinating more often than usual or urinating in a small amount nausea and vomiting fever chills if an infection is present when a patient get infected from renal disease you will find he will complain often maturation frequent maturation pyrexia along with chills these are the symptoms you will find in your patient there are usually five type of stones but the most common type of stone which we usually assess is calcium oxalate stone another one is calcium phosphate then struvite then uric acid then cysteine stone percentage of uh, calcium oxalate is greater that is about uh, 80% and uh, uric acid is stone about 7% struvite stone about 12% so now i will tell what are the stone why these stones are categorized and what are their composition and how it develop a surgeon a urologist when learn about the treatment they they also have to know about the type of kidney stone a sonologist when learn about uh, scanning he must also have to learn about the stone but diagnosis will all always be the same you will find echogenic dense area casting a black shadow and it give evidence that there is a stone Sim a similarly a surgeon will treat all the stone in same way but we have to learn about each type of stone so now i am going to let you all know 
about all these type of stones in my next slide. One minute. <clears throat> Okay. Number one is uh, calcium stone. Calcium stone or calcium stone usually in the form of calcium oxalate and uh, these type of stone we suffer from such type of stone. Uh, our patients suffer from such type of stone. There uh, uh, you will find in majority of cases and these stones are are formed from our diet there are certain type of fruits and vegetables nuts chocolates that contain a uh, high number of oxalate even our liver also uh, our liver also produce oxalates okay dietary factor high dose of vitamin d intestinal bypass surgery or several metabolic disorder can increase concentration of calcium or oxalate in the urine there are certain uh, drugs also uh, which uh, some medications which are used for the treatment of migraine or certain drugs which are used for the treatment of our diabetes mellitus such type of drug also calls calcium stone so another type of stone is true white stone and true white stones are such type of stone in which infection due to infection stone developed due to urinary tract infection renal infection these stones can grow quickly and become quite large sometime with few symptoms or little warning another one is uric stone uric acid stone uric acid stone can form in people who lose too much of fluid because of chronic diarrhea or malabsorption those who eat high protein diet and those with diabetes or metabolic syndrome certain genetic factor also may increase your risk of uric acid stone another one is cystine stone this is stone from people with hereditary disorder and uh, in such type of condition you will find that uh, after lithotropsy recurrent development of the stone again patient will come in your uh, radiology department for checkup after every six month or uh, yearly uh, he will develop a large stone so such type of stone may be genetical next slide diagnostic evaluation number one blood number two urine analysis in urine analysis crystals can be seen by the pathologist or lab technologist cystoscopy is a invasive procedure a urologist usually use such type of info invasive procedure to check in the urinary bladder check the cystitis or trabeculation or diverticulum sometimes stone get stuck in the diverticulum also diverticulum there is a stone you will find during the scanning you will find such type of problem and cystoscope is a uh, technique by which uh, stone can be seen another technique is x-ray then ct scan mri intravenous urogram is actually x-ray intravenous urogram or intravenous pilography is same type of things actually x-ray special procedure is said as intravenous urogram or intravenous pilography and the ultrasonography one of the best modality it do not produce any ionizing radiation very safe for the patient so every i think ultrasonography is one of the best modality by the help of which we can 
find we can reveal several type of anomaly related to kidney, ureter, bladder, and even biliary system also. One of the drawback of ultrasonography that uh, the size of the diameter of the ureter is uh, very thin, about uh, 1 mm to 4 or 5 mm. And in such condition, if you want to trace the ureter, it is not possible. So when, when there is any fluid or pus inside the ureter and it happens due to any structure, new plasma or stone, then you can able to see an echogenic, an echoic dilated area that is actually ureter. So USG is one of the best modality. Another one is KUB. KUB is examination, actually X-ray examination. Kidney, ureter, and bladder. There are two types of X-ray imaging. One is said as plain abdominal examination in which fluid level or ascitic fluid can be checked. And another one is KUB. If by the help of KUB, usually we focus on kidney, ureter, and bladder, but positioning remain same in both condition. Now, next slide. This, uh, this image is showing about the cystoscopy, and it is an invasive procedure. A urologist usually insert a urethra and check the urinary bladder, whether patient is suffering from any cystitis or any other, there is a stone or not. So cystoscopy, one of the important procedure, and even it is uh, invasive also. Next one is diagnostic study in which a dye is injected that is also said as contrast agent, iodinated, contrast agent usually we use the non-ionic type of iodinated contrast agent which is injected via vein and after two or three minutes you can able to take nephrogram then pilogram and then you can uh, able to check the entire kidney and then ureter and the area where stone is obstructed next Diagnostic study, that is ultrasonography. Uh, in ultrasonography, we usually take two images. Number one, longitudinal. Number two, transverse. As I said in the beginning, that to check gallbladder, 3.5 megahertz probe is used. But if you suspect more smaller stone, within the uh, within any urinary uh, within uh, kidney you will find a small stone for for that purpose you have to use uh, higher frequency probe that is 5 megahertz probe you should have to use it may be possible that you will able to see able to locate that stone next This is one of the image showing about the stone, a stone, uh, a bone, it cast shadow-like structure, like a bone. Bone also cast shadow-like structure because it is dense. Simply, a stone is also very dense and it casts shadow. And uh, this is the, uh, this shadow is an artifact and this artifact is considered as beneficial artifact. Beneficial artifact, artifacts by the help of which we can able to judge, yes, this is cyst, yes, this is tumor, yes, this is stone, such type of artifact is considered best. And another one is artifact which cause disturbance in the image that type of artifact is not good okay now next slide
ट्रॉमा किडनी और रीनल ट्रॉमा वेन किडनी इज इंजर्ड बाई आउटसाइड फोर्स किडनी एज किडनी इज वेरी सोफेस्टिकेटेड ऑर्गन इट इज इन वन ऑफ द सेफेस्ट प्लेस ऑल्सो इट इज डीपली इन इम्बेडेड इन साइड द फैट इट इज डीपली इन साइडेड बाई इम्बेडेड इन फैट and guarded by back muscle and rib cage but injury can happen as a result of blunt trauma or penetrating trauma blunt trauma do not uh, in which skin will not tear uh, there will be no bleeding internal bleeding may happen in such condition in blunt trauma but penetrating trauma is more dangerous penetrating trauma damage caused by an object that pierces the skin and enters the body like a knife or a bullet such type of trauma is said as penetrating trauma next blunt trauma the best sign of blunt kidney injury is blood in the urine and the condition is said as hematuria 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 is the condition in which rbc will come out with the blood when patient will maturate when patient will maturate sometime it is possible when large amount of rbc will come out then patient will also able to judge yes blood is coming out but in certain case rbc is come out but a patient cannot able to judge we can suspect or any doctor suspect a physician suspect that whether he is suffering from hematuria or not then he sent for pathological investigation and for occult test occult blood test in which if there is any hidden blood is print present it can be checked by the microscopy blunt trauma kidney injury may show no outside sign but bruises may be seen the back or abdomen where kidney are now about the penetrating trauma penetrating kidney trauma may be suspected when there there's a wound from knife bullet or other object that are persist inside skin but sometime these wounds may be small or hard to find also sometime kidney wound is far away from the kidney next diagnosis a simple dip stick urine test can be detected microscopic hematuria when kidney injury is suspected it is vital to do imaging study of the both kidney these will confirm the diagnosis and tell how bad injury is mri ct use usg but i will consider usg is better than you uh, ct and mri MRI is considered one of the best uh, imaging tool for soft tissue examination but it is more expensive and it take time also CT scan produce ionizing radiation which is harmful for the patient so i think ultrasonography is best for the diagnosis of injury trauma traumatic injury okay next slide what you will find you will find perirenal fluid or tissue injury ultrasonography is one of the best modality by the help of which we can able to detect fluid fluid contact content whether it is present inside the urinary bladder or vascular or within the uh, gall bladder 
fluid always appear anechoic black so if there will be any tear in the kidney blood will come out it may be possible that urine will also accumulate outside the kidney what you will find you will find perirenal fluid appear black color surrounding surrounded outside of the kidney you can easily able to diagnose yes it is it may be blood or urine but after 48 hours blood usually get clotted inside and the condition is said as hematoma and when hematoma will form then it will become hypoechogenic and then its echogenicity will increase later on but urine will urine will remain same and echogenic so ultrasound is considered one of the best examination for trauma next there are some figure and by this figure you can able to do grading also you can uh, grade the condition also traumatic injury also this is the perinatal fluid and the fluid is just after uh, traumatic injury fluid outside the kidney and this is the image if you have if you if you want you may take a screenshot of this image okay next in acute stage renal ultrasound may show intrarenal or perirenal eco free area as a result of present of blood late sign hematoma when blood get clotted it appear echogenic hypoechogenic or heterogeneous retroperitoneal mass no Today, I will not tell anything about retroperitoneal mass. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, definitely, it was a very, a very great uh, presentation over here. We 